Welcome everyone. Thank you. It is our pleasure having you here today. My name is Terry Kennedy, and I am a descendant of a survivor of the East St. Louis Race War. We're here today to recognize a number of significant things that happened during that time. And we welcome you here to this bridge. Some of us have done this for many years, and this is the largest crowd we've had. And it is so good to look into your faces. Thank you for being here. And so we now call forward now Ann Walker and Thadi Kennedy to give us the vision of why we're here and, the, and a little bit about the history of how and significance of this bridge. Ann Walker and Thadi. Vision. I, I really enjoy working with these guys because each of us kind of has different personalities. I'm kind of like the vision person. He's the action person. He's the rock of Gibraltar. <laughs> honestly, honestly. Whatever we dream up, he makes happen. <laughs> the vision to do this is not original. We have a New Yorker in the uh, audience with us. And it started in New York City with the silent parade. We don't use the word parade because parade sounds rather gay. Uh, and this is not a gaiety kind of thing. Uh, so that's why we call it a procession. We don't call it a march because when we're marching, we've got boots on and we mean serious business. Okay. Business? Business? <laughs> so the vision is to carry on a tradition so that it is embedded in the minds of our youth what it takes to win a struggle. You can't do it laying in the bed every day. You can't do it if you're not trying to get an education. You can't do it if you don't know your history and if you're not striving to make your future better, not just for yourself, but for your neighbors. You just start in the home with your brothers and your sisters and your parents. We need to have more neighborhood organizations. And the neighborhood organizations ought to have town 
you know, it goes. We, we have neighborhood organizations that go to city hall sometimes. They have meetings like they do. I live in Wasell Village. So the village should have a group that represents them. And that should happen not just in East St. Louis, but all over. Chicago, I'm sure you all do the same thing, right? Whoop, I know some Chicago folk up in here. I didn't hear a soul. Is that right, Chicago? Yeah. Oh, OK, OK. So the vision is simple. We, we have all descendants who were on that date involved in some sort of way. And the vision is to carry on the tradition. May I have my elders permission to speak? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. On this day, 100 years ago, somewhere, if we want to go about four hours in the future, my grandmother, my father, my uncles and aunts paddled on a raft made of wooden doors and burnt wood across this river. It took them four hours to get from one side to the other just to get to safety. Had they not done that, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. I am so moved, as Anna said, I am so moved to see all of you right here. Why we are here is to make sure that a history that has been hidden for so long can be hidden no longer. This is a story that belongs to us all to all of us. That's right. There would not have been a Kenlock had this not happened. There would not have been a Brooklyn or, or East Carondelet, Illinois, had this not happened. This happened, it helped, it, it, not, it didn't just help, but it changed this entire metropolitan region economically, politically, socially, and geographically. As such, I think that our youth and all of us need to know this, first and foremost, in front of our minds. It needs to be a truth that needs to be heard. And I want to say, Asante Sana, thank you all for coming out for this. Thank you. Thank you, brother. It is across this bridge in 1917 that people ran from East St. Louis into relative safety into St. Louis. Across this bridge that we are standing on here today. It is across this bridge that they took all that they had what little they had and crossed into St. Louis. It is across this bridge that people from St. Louis went into East St. Louis to try to help and to make things a little better from those who had lost everything. What we're speaking about are communities coming together, uniting in times of trouble, uniting in, in times of disaster, uniting in times of despair. And so we gather here today, not at the divide between Missouri and Illinois, but at the merger, the unity line between the two states here today. That's right. It is simply how you look at it. Is your cup half empty or is it half full? We could see, because we're here right at the dividing line, they say, you could see it as a division or you can see it as the line that fuses us together. We're coming here today, people from both sides, fusing our energies together to remember, to commemorate, and to rebuild, which is what the theme of the East St. Louis 1917 Centennial Commission and Cultural Initiative created for this time. Remember, commemorate, and rebuild. Not only bricks and mortar, but rebuilding our ties together, rebuilding our connections between people, rebuilding our connections between organizations, rebuilding our connections between families. And so then we're here with all of the various organizations. In 1917, the NAACP sent individuals into East St. Louis when it happened, and they helped in both the effort of the family surviving, but politicizing and pointing out to people that this is an atrocity. And we have representation from the NAACP here today. Please raise your hands. You can hold up your banner. Hold up your banner. Thank you. 
Thank you. A year later, later that year rather, Du Bois came down to East St. Louis with others and also met with business people in St. Louis and urged the forming of an urban league. And the year later, the St. Louis Urban League was founded to give relief to the survivors of the East St. Louis race riot. We have representation from the Urban League here today. Where are they? Please hold up your hands. We have other organizations here. Organization of Black Struggle, they are here. Who, where are they? Where's your banner? They're here, they're in the back. And where would we be without the Prince Hall Masons? That's right, give yourself a shout out whose historical legacy is some of the shoulders that we all stand upon. And other organizations who are here and individuals that I'm missing one. Better Family Life, thank you. Over here to my left, as we recognize them. We also have numerous elected officials. We must recognize, of course, the beautiful mayor from East St. Louis. Mayor Hicks, will you please stand up for us? We have our newly elected first female Mayor from the city of St. Louis, Mayor Cruson. We have the president of the board of aldermen here, Lewis Reed. Where is he? We have representation from the St. Louis Automatic African American Caucus. They are here. Where are they? We have state representative Josh. Where is he? Josh Peters. Where? Please stand for us. All of these individuals are here to remember, to commemorate, and to work towards rebuilding. We must remember, history gives us at least two things, information and inspiration. Information includes data, who, what, where, and how. How? With that information, we can project ourselves into the future. And so it is important that we remember. We now have special presentations. And first, we'd like to hear some words, if she has some for us, from our mayor of East St. Louis, Mayor Hicks. Would you please come forward? Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Good evening again, everyone. Good evening. I am so humbled to be here with you this evening. This is a beautiful sight, isn't it? Yes, it is. It really, it really is. Uh, thank you again for allowing me to be here. And as we remember and honor those who lost their lives in the 1917 pogrom that took place in the city of East St. Louis 100 years ago, the history of East St. Louis speaks to many issues that we still struggle with today. Amen. Racial inequalities, systemic racism ingrained in the fiber of this society, and social political and economic injustices that we still face today speaks to the work that we must continue. African Americans are still judged by the color of their skin and not the content of their character. African Americans, men, unfortunately, black men and women are dying every day just because they are black. Martin Luther King Jr. said, human progress is neither automatic nor inevitable. Every step toward the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggle. The tireless exertions and passionate concern of dedicated individuals. How dedicated are we today? What sacrifices are we making to ensure that our region rises from its corrupt and bloody past. We are all accountable to those who lost their lives 100 years ago and to those who have lost their lives since from ways equally as brutal as, 19, as the 1917 pogrom, from neglect, from little to no access to needed health care, from an education system that has failed to set, uh, set them up for success, from a lack of opportunity to find meaningful work, and from narratives about black people in our community that leave them without hope. 
So we look back to make sure we do better moving forward by addressing race head on, by ensuring that black lives really do matter, by turning neglect into investment, by addressing sickness and promoting health, by educating our youth, by providing opportunities to work, and by restoring hope. It's not too late to pick up our individual crosses and collectively strive for human progress. Growth often comes with struggle and pain. I, like you, do not enjoy pain. But I do understand, as Frederick Douglass stated, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. That's right. Let's embrace the struggle and let's embrace each other. This is the greatest honor we could give our forefathers. Thank you for allowing me to be here today. Inspiring words, thank you. We now have, yes. Thank you. Next we will have our first female mayor from the city of St. Louis, Mayor Crusa. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you. It is great to see so many of you here today. I want to just take one moment to thank Alderman Terry Kennedy for inviting me to stand here with you this evening to commemorate this historic event. It was hard to find the words to talk about and remember such a horrific event and a somber period in our history. What happened here 100 years ago is not often talked about. Sometimes it takes the 50 or the 100 year anniversary for us to come together, learn about, and acknowledge some of the most horrific aspects of our history. But if we minimize our country's history of intolerance and racial violence, we do a disservice to those who came before us and those who come next. Erasing the memories of the men and women who died right here doesn't change what happened, and it doesn't make us better. To make progress, we must step out of our comfort zones and acknowledge the subjects and the events that often don't get discussed in polite company. We are supposed to make it so that our children are better off than we are. And we can't do that without equipping them with the knowledge of our country's history. The riots and the horrendous killings that happened right here are a symptom of a disease that we still suffer from today. I do believe that with each passing decade, we have moved further away from the intolerance of our nation's past, but I also know that we are not over the hill yet. We are confronted with just how far we have to go when there's an incident involving a young black man and a police officer. Some dig their heels in and choose sides, talking past each other without bothering to really listen to one another. But our country's and our struggles with race are much more complicated and subtle than the interactions that we see on the news. We struggle with race and equity in our housing policies, in our workplaces, in our health care system, and of course in our criminal justice system. The race riots that happened right here in this spot remind us how destructive fear and hate and intolerance can be. We still have a long journey ahead of us, but at the same time, as I look out on all of you and as I stand here with my friend and colleague, Alderman Terry Kennedy, I do feel hopeful for our future together. As you all know, Alderman Kennedy's family escaped the East St. Louis riots by building a makeshift raft and crossing the river into St. Louis. It's that kind of perseverance that gives me hope. We have come a long way and we have made significant progress 
but we are nowhere near finished. I'm a naturally optimistic person, but I know that optimism alone will not get us where we need to go and where we want to go. It'll take many hard choices, uncomfortable conversations, deliberate actions to achieve the progress that we all strive for. It's my sincerest hope and belief that if we are intentional in using the events of the past to inform the decisions of the present, that we will make more progress that we need to make. And it's just such an honor that you invited me to be here with you today. Thank you so very much. We have represent state rep, where is it? Josh Peters here who has some words from Congressman Clay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. On behalf of Congressman Clay and the Missouri House of Representatives, I want to thank Alderman Kennedy and Ms. Walker for having me here today. Uh, Congressman Clay was unable to make it with us or to be with us this evening, but he did send his, uh, his regrets. In addition to that, I have a proclamation in which I will read in part. In commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the East St. Louis race riots, July 1st to 3rd, 1917, whereas on the day of commemoration designed for rev reviving and renewing East St. Louis in Illinois, we, the living, those who died, excuse me, we, the living, honor those who died more than 300 African Americans at the hands of, ang of an angry mob fueled by race, hate, fear of ambition, industrious, and hardworking people of color. Now, therefore, I, William Lacey Clay, Congressman of the 1st Congressional District of Missouri, do hereby acknowledge before the United States Congress, the nation, and the world that East St. Louis riot was born out of hate fear of one's people over another because of the color of their skin and racial ancestries as, de as dedicated by the creator of the universe and victims of their descendants and all others affected by the 1917 racial strife before, excuse me, be forever remembered and honored by people who chose reconciliation and civilized social order over hate violence and discord. Let it be so. It's hereby declared East St. Louis Race Riot Commemoration Day in the 1st Congressional District of Missouri. Signed, William Lacey Clay, Member of Congress. Wow. We also have a resolution from the St. Louis Board of Aldermen the president of the Board of Aldermen is here, who will say a few remarks, and members of the African American Automatic Caucus, please come forward as well. Good evening. Good evening. Tell you, I don't know about you, but I am certainly honored to be here today. What about you? Yeah. What about you? Yeah. Come on. I'm going to let uh, Alderman Jeffrey Boyd read a couple passages from the resolution. Then we're going to have a couple words and uh, just in, in to talk about the resolution, what it means, and what it means to us as a city, and individually how this riot changed our lives. Good evening. Good evening. I'll be quick. On behalf of the Board of Aldermen of the City of St. Louis, it's our pleasure to support and help commemorate the 100th uh, uh, commemoration of the East St. Louis riot. And real quickly, whereas it has come to the attention of this Honorable Board of Aldermen of the City of St. Louis of the 100th commemoration of East St. Louis riot that occurred July the 1st to the 3rd, 1917 in East St. Louis, Illinois, now therefore be resolved by this Honorable Board of Aldermen of the City of St. Louis that we pause in our deliberations to recognize the events and issues that caused the East St. Louis race riot and by adoption of this resolution join in the 100th commemorative activities congratulate those who have kept the history alive. We further direct the clerk of the board to spread a copy of this resolution across the minutes of these proceedings and to prepare a commemorative copy 
to the end that it may be presented to our honoree at a time and place deemed appropriate by the sponsor introduced on the 30th day of June 2017, passed unanimously in bank by the entire Board of Aldermen. Today, we're here under the spirit of unity. If you think about history, history is never made by the movement of one person. History is made by the movement of the masses. When Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and others came together, they came together under a common idea that equality and justice is something that should be our birthright, and we should have it just like everybody else on this planet. It's the same things we fight for today. And we need to remember moving forward some of those many lessons. We need to remember the importance of unity and coming together and moving as a mass, even if we're separated geographically. Here we're separated by a river and we're coming together. Whether you're separated by age, separated by neighborhoods, income levels, we have to come together under a common idea that there is a better place out there and we need to work to make sure that we turn it over better than what we received. And that's why I'm here today. And that's why the rest of us stand here today. I'm gonna let a couple of other aldermen, if they have something else to add to that, we must stay together. And if you've watched any of the things on TV lately about what's happening in the White House, if that don't wake you up and make you wanna come together, I don't know what will. That's right, brother, go get it. So let's come together, let's unify for a change for our city, for our region, United States of America, and turn this place over better than what we receive. Well, it's an honor to be here, and I want to thank all of you for coming out today. And I thank you, Alderman Kennedy, for your leadership and your vision and leading this effort. Oftentimes, we talk about a gap between young people and the older generation. And as a young person, the youngest member ever elected to the Board of Aldermen for the city of St. Louis, which I am so proud of, I want to say that there is no gap, there is no missing link, there is no misunderstanding, there is no misinterpretation. We're all on the same page, we're all reading from the same book, we're all going through the same struggle. So I thank you, Alderman Kennedy. And I must shout out my beautiful mayor, Lada Cruz. Good evening to everyone. Very quickly, I want to say to you that it is a pleasure for me to share these moments with you. But what I want to leave you with is, you know we're talking about our history. But we also must plan for our future. So you must own the dialogue that will lead you to your future. You must get ahead of propaganda and misinformation and lead yourself and your future's goals, not someone else. So one of the things that I share with the young people that I mentor is, first of all, educate yourself, learn, speak up, question, but most especially, work hard and be present. I wish you the very best in the next hundred years because you know, if we all do what we can do these next few years, it'll be better for everyone. Thank you. Finally, uh, Madam Mayor, the resolution that we passed, just to sum it up, what that resolution is, is an official document from the Board of Aldermen that we pass it on the floor. And the importance of that document as African Americans, as we all know, we've been written out of history, we've been written around history. It's so important moving forward that our history is documented correctly. And it's written and, and, and codified so that 100, 200 years from now, when you research the records of the city of St. Louis, you will read about this day. You'll read about this resolution. You'll read about the fact that we've celebrated this hundred years, and what it means to Africa. What it means to African Americans moving forward. Thank you. There are a number of descendants here today. We ask that all of the descendants of 
people who were involved are victims of the East St. Louis race riot. We ask that you please stand now. All the descendants. Thank you. Yeah, they're everywhere. Not just in East St. Louis or St. Louis, but all over the country. That all over the world, you're absolutely right. That incident caused a dispersal. And those individuals have gone to other places and have made an impact in those places where they go. And that is the thing to keep in mind. But remember, it is across this bridge that they walked. It is across this bridge that we sit on right now that they took their hopes and dreams, their hurts and pains, that they walked with everything that they had in their hand and tried to rebuild a new life. And organizations like the NAACP and the Urban League helped in that process. Yes. Thank you. You know, people always tell you to say something and then they say it. <laughs> Come on up here, Ann Walker, and say this. Come on up here. Uh, come on up and say it loud so the rest of us can hear it. Please say it. The MacArthur Bridge was known as the Free Bridge, uh, built in like 1904 for the World's Fair. And uh, uh, that was also one of the escape routes in addition to Eads Bridge. But we only can look at this bridge as symbolic of what happened because there's a big gap in that bridge you know it could be open and maybe it will be open someday but maybe that was something that should go on the redevelopment exactly. list rebuild. on the rebuild list I heard somebody earlier today talking about an escape plan in case something like what happened in the Gulf and in Louisiana happens that people in this area can survive. So, you know, we need to have a way out. So I let her say it. <laughs> she said it more beautifully anyway. Uh, Thadi, where is Thadi? Some of you have, can see the large reef that we have here. As we said, we not only came to remember, we also came to commemorate, to give honor to those who survived to give honor to those who lost their lives, to raise up the fact that these individuals lived the lives that they had pumping hearts and dreams and aspirations. And so we come here today to commemorate as well. We need Ann and Thadi as well. We're now at the place where we would like to place the wreath into the water. Thadi. And any other descendants that would like to join us in placing the wreath in the water. Thank <laughs> you. 